The 27th of January, 1945, approximately 40 miles west of Krakow, German-occupied Poland. The Soviet army enters Auschwitz, the largest of the extermination centers and one of the most infamous camps of the Holocaust. It is estimated that a minimum of 1.3 million people were deported to Auschwitz between 1940 and 1945, and of these, at least 1.1 million were murdered. However, not all of its prisoners died. In this Nazi factory of horror, the Soviet soldiers liberate more than 7,000 surviving inmates who are mostly ill and dying. The unspeakable conditions the liberators confront shed light on the full scope of Nazi horrors. One of the perpetrators of the criminal Nazi regime responsible for these atrocities is Gerhard Palitsch. Gerhard Arno Max Palitsch was born on the 17th of June 1913 in the village of Grossopitz near Dresden, then part of the German Empire. He was a farmer by profession, got married to a woman named Louise, and the marriage produced two children, a daughter Helga and a son Lotte. On the 30th of January 1933, Adolf Hitler was appointed Chancellor of Germany by President Paul von Hindenburg. In March 1933, the 19-year-old Palitsch joined the Nazi party and the SS. The same year he started to work as a guard at concentration camps at Oranienburg and then Lichtenberg. In 1936, he was transferred to Sachsenhausen, where he worked first as a block leader. Due to his devoted service and hatred of prisoners, Palitsch was soon promoted to report leader and was mainly responsible for prisoner roll calls. The Second World War began on the 1st of September 1939 when Germany invaded Poland. In the spring of 1940, Palitsch was transferred from Sachsenhausen to the newly established Auschwitz concentration camp, located in German-occupied Poland. The Germans established Auschwitz concentration camp in May 1940, around 60 kilometers west of Krakow. The direct reason for the establishment of the camp was the fact that mass arrests of Poles were increasing beyond the capacity of existing local prisons. Gerhard Palitsch did not come into the camp alone. From Sachsenhausen he brought with him 30 German prisoners with green badges. Green badges were set for convicted criminals who are likely of a tough temperament suitable for capo duty. The Kapos were prisoners in Nazi camps who were selected by the SS to supervise other camp inmates in exchange for better food, clothing, and housing, and they were often as brutal as their SS supervisors. The Greens, as these 30 German prisoners were called, did much to establish the sadism of early camp life, which was directed particularly at Polish inmates. At Auschwitz, Palitsch became a report leader, and together with his Kapos, he unleashed a brutal reign of terror in the camp. When newly arrived Jews, along with other prisoners arrived at Auschwitz, they were subjected to a selection process on the ramp. Nazi officials, including doctors such as Josef Mengele, would separate the arrivals into two groups, those fit for forced labor and those deemed unfit, often including the elderly, young children, pregnant women, and the sick or disabled. Those considered fit for labor were sent to the camp, where they would face grueling conditions and forced labor. Those deemed unfit, often including the elderly, young children, pregnant women, and the sick or disabled, were sent directly to the gas chambers for immediate execution. Palitsch was very active in selections on the ramp. When his colleagues escorted poor victims to the gas chambers, they would tell them that they would be given hot soup and a cup of tea or coffee. However, Palitsch greeted the newcomers differently, saying, We Germans have no sympathy for the enemies of the Third Reich like you. With joy, we will hound you all through the chimneys of the crematoria. Forget your wives, your children, your families. You will die here like dogs. On one occasion, Palitsch shot several Polish officers who had reached the camp with the transport in August 1940. The reason for their killing was their refusal to kiss his boots. Palitsch was a twisted sadist who enjoyed torturing his victims before killing them. He would whip the poor prisoners with 10 to 25 strokes and then chase them in the frog position for a 500 meter distance to the bunker, where they would wait for the execution for a few hours while being harassed and tortured throughout that time. No matter what time of year, the naked prisoners would be kicked and spat on before being executed. In November 1941, Palitsch was the first to use the method of shooting prisoners individually in the neck with a small caliber rifle in front of the death wall, also called the black wall. 
After the war, the Auschwitz survivor Witold Pilecki described in his report that the place often smelled like a slaughterhouse. Once Palich boasted to another SS member that he had personally shot approximately 25,000 people in the back of the head. He was allegedly paid five marks for each executed victim. He would carry out execution after execution without any sense of conscience. If there was a delay, he would put the gun down, whistle a song, or talk to bystanders about irrelevant topics. With his cynical attitude, he wanted to show to other SS officers how tough he was and how little he cared about killing innocent people. During his time at Auschwitz, Palich lived with his family at a two-story house in close proximity to the Auschwitz camp. Helena Klees, at the time a 19-year-old Polish woman, was made to do work in the Palich household. Helena described Palich as a blonde, good-looking man, who had, however, a strange look in his eyes. Although at home Palich was a friendly and loving man who cared about his family, at work he was described by some prisoners as a true degenerate. He enjoyed making his victims suffer as much as possible by first killing the children, and then their parents to ensure that they lived to see their children being murdered. A former prisoner, Dr. Boleslaus Bozhin, described what he witnessed at Auschwitz one day when Palich murdered a family of five, one after another, without any hesitation. Palich was holding one child by the hand, who was standing on his left. The other child stood between the parents, and the youngest baby was kept by the mother tight to her chest. Palich shot the baby in the head first. Then he shot the child standing between his parents. After he did so, the man and woman stood motionless, like statues. Then Palich seized the oldest child, threw him to the ground, and standing on his back, shot him in the back of the neck. Finally, Palich shot the woman, and then the man. On a different occasion, Palich seized a child from its mother's arms and smashed its little head against a stone. Once Palich ordered little Jewish girls to run around a closed yard, he would shoot at them, killing them like rabbits. After he had killed them all, he was seen calmly smoking a cigarette with a smile on his face. In September 1941, Palich participated in the first tentative gassing using Zyklon B to murder 600 Russian prisoners of war and 250 sick Polish prisoners. They were crammed in the basement of Block 11, which was primarily used for punishment, torture, and executions. The gassing was carried out in the punishment cells, but the next day not all prisoners were dead, so Palich had to add more Zyklon B. Rudolf Herz, the first commandant of Auschwitz, later testified at the International Military Tribunal at Nuremberg in April 1946, where he gave a detailed accounting of his crimes, including his take on the successful gassing conducted at Auschwitz in September 1941. Hers recalled a sense of relief, as he believed that gassing prisoners proved less difficult for the perpetrators than shooting them. He said, At that time, I had no second thoughts about the killing, as such of Russian prisoners of war, for I had my orders and I had to carry them out. Yet I must admit that I was relieved by this gassing. I always felt horror at the shootings. I was now relieved that we were all to be spared these bloodbaths and that the victims themselves could be treated more humanely right up to the last moment. Some prisoners in more trusted jobs in Auschwitz fought back against the camp and one of the means of attack was to breed lice infected with typhus in the camp infirmary and then put these lice into the clothing given to SS personnel. Because of his reputation, Palich was given such an item. However, it was not Palich but his wife Louisa who contracted typhus and in the end died from it. She was 26 years old and died only after a few months after giving birth to their son Lotte, who was born at Auschwitz. After her death, Palich, who was within the SS family community at Auschwitz and described as a very friendly and loving family man, became increasingly addicted to alcohol. In June 1943, he was sent to the Gypsy family camp, which was part of Auschwitz. Romani families deported to the Gypsy family camp were held together, instead of being separated as was typical at Auschwitz. Palich's passion after the death of his wife was not only alcohol, but also women, including female Romani and Jewish prisoners. When he was caught with a Romani female inmate named Vera, it was the beginning of his end. It was deemed unacceptable for a member of the superior Aryan race to have a sexual relationship with someone deemed inferior, and Palich was accused of race defilement. In addition, he was also accused of theft, having enriched himself to a considerable extent by plundering the possessions of murdered Jews. These stolen possessions were considered the property of the Nazi party. 
Palic was arrested and briefly detained in the bunker of Block 11, together with concentration camp prisoners. His fellow prisoners described how Palic was a completely different person in custody and used the informal German Du among the prisoners as a matter of course. For his crimes, Palic was sentenced to several years in prison by the SS and police court. However, he was subsequently pardoned and expelled from the SS in June 1944. In the end, justice finally caught up with Palic. When in late October 1944, the Soviet and Romanian army started its offensive against Budapest, Palic belonged to the 33,000 German soldiers defending the city, together with Hungarian troops. On the 1st of December 1944, Adolf Hitler declared Budapest a fortress city which was to be defended to the last man. There was no escape for Palic, as the Führer also forbade any withdrawal attempt. Gerhard Palic was 31 years old when he was killed on the 7th of December 1944, near the village of Jorbag, around 70 kilometers from Budapest. Rudolf Hess, who was not hesitant in his criticism of his staff, wrote in his memoirs, Palic was the most cunning and slippery creature that I have ever gotten to know and experience in the many concentration camps. He literally walked over bodies to satisfy his hunger for power. There were no tears shed for Gerhard Palic. Thanks for watching the World History Channel. Be sure to like and subscribe, and click the bell notification icon so you don't miss our next episodes. We thank you, and we'll see you next time on the channel.